Say, this is the word of God. I am who this word says I am. I can do what this word says I can do. I can be who this word says I can be. This word of God gives me purpose. This word of God builds my faith. And this word of God has the power to transform my life. Today, if I let it. This word of God is real. This word of God is living. This word of God is true. And I believe every part of it. I believe everything it says about me. Look at your neighbor and say, I believe everything it says about you. Everybody have your seat. Say amen. Look at somebody else and say, I believe everything this word says about you. Friend and enemy. I believe everything this word says about you. Mm. Prophesy to your neighbor. I believe everything this word says about you. I believe what God is going to do in your life is going to change everything. You should be looking at somebody. Some of y'all was looking at me. I appreciate it. Mm. Have your way, Lord. Today we are launching our new series. New series alert. Today we're launching our new series, and this new series is called So Well. Look at your neighbor and say, So Well. S O W W. S O W. So Well. So Well. I'm so excited about this series. In this series, we're going to be digging a well on what it looks like to sow well. What, what does it look like to be one of God's good sowers? Somebody say good sower. What does it look like to put a seed in the ground? How does God desire you to put a seed in the ground? Ask your neighbor, do you sow well? No, look at them, for real. We're a family. Ask somebody else, do you sow well? Even if you got to talk to yourself, self, say self, do you sow well? Now, I want you to take note. Oh, take note. Take note. Because as the Well Church Cincinnati, going as we start 2024... Um, the Lord gave me a prophetic message for you as we start this series. I want you to hear this and hear it very closely. This message pertains to the house and it pertains to you individually. Okay? I'm going to read it verbatim. I heard the Lord say, you are entering into a new season of faith. You're entering into a new season of faith. You're entering, entering into a time where I'm going to pull on your faith to be a better sower. I'll say it again. You're entering into a season of time where I'm going to pull on your faith to be a better sower. The Lord said, I'm going to pull on your faith to be more generous this year. I'm going to pull on your faith to be more generous this year. He said, I want the Well Church of Cincinnati at 5550 Reading Road, Cincinnati, Ohio, to be known as a community of sowers who sow well. I want the Well Church Cincinnati to be known as a community of sowers who sow well. This is a house of prayer. This is a house of praise and worship. This is a house 
this house is transforming into a safe place for the lost. He says, this house is transforming into a safe place for the lost. This house is the house of good sowers. This house not only has good sowers, but this house is a good sower. Hear, hear what he says. This house is not only a house of good sowers, but this house is a good sower. I'm calling you to be a resource. I'm calling you to be a well where the whole city can come take a drink. Every lost soul, everyone who's hurt, everyone who is in need, anyone who is thirsty shall find living water here. Then the Lord said, there will be a breaking of financial strongholds this year. There will be a breaking of financial strongholds this year. He said, because of how generous you are in your finances. He said, that's to you individually and the house. So leaders of the house hear that too. There will be a breaking of financial strongholds this year because of how generous you are in your finances. He says, when you release your hold on money, heaven will release its wealth upon you. When you release your hold on money, heaven will release the wealth of the wicked. It is stored up for you. Then the Lord took me to Haggai 2, 7 and 9. He says, this is for us, everyone in this room and this house. He says, I will shake all nations. And what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. I need you to write that scripture down. This is what he just declared over our house this year. That right there, as a hard pill to swallow. For our house and for you, Haggai 2, 8, 9, says the silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of this former house. That hit me pretty heavy. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the, pres of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord. Now, I knew this was the word of the Lord. Why? You know, sometimes when you hear God, you're like, God, is this you? I knew this was God. Because releasing your hold on finances is one of the hardest things to do. A lot of us have a tight grip on our money. A lot of us have a tight grip on our money. So tight that, that God can't even pull it out of your hand. And he's saying... This is the year where you release that hold. This is the year where you stop holding it so tight. That's how I knew it was God, because it's it something that I don't like doing. Can I be honest? It's hard to sow what you feel you ain't got enough of. It's hard to sow what you feel you need more of. So while preparing for this series and today's message, um, staff, we, we heard the Lord say we need to stop right here and start digging. I'm like, well, well God, what, do you, what are you trying to get us to understand? And then God starts speaking again. He said, watch this, he said this. He said, there is a kingdom concept and a kingdom message you have to get at the top of this year to see what I have in store for you in the coming months. There's a kingdom concept and a kingdom message you have to get at the top of this year to see what I have in store for you in the coming months. He's saying, you gotta get this. The Spirit of the Lord said, I'm about to shake things up in your life. I'm, a, I'm rearranging what you thought you knew. That's what he said, I'm rearranging. Write that down, make sure you write this down. Because when things start, looking peculiar, don't think it's strange. He says, I'm rearranging 
what you thought you knew. I'm rearranging what you thought you knew. Then the Lord said, if you allow me, I'm going to bump you back into alignment. If you allow me, I'm going to bump you back into alignment. So the kingdom message, you have to understand at the top of this year, at the top of this year, is going to be my first point for the day, to launch this series. Write this down. Number one, God owns everything. God says you have to get this at the top of the year. You have to get this. God owns everything. Number one, God, oh, I have five points today and that's it. God, number one, God owns everything. Everything. Our Lord God is king and he rules and reigns over everything. Everything we see, touch, and feel is in the dominion of God. Kings have a dominion. Dominion is their domain. It's what they rule over. Our king is the Lord God, our father, and he owns everything. Look at your neighbor, tell him he owns everything. How do I know this? Because the Bible says so. This, right, somebody laugh, yeah, exactly. Psalm 24, verse one, amplified version. It says, the, Lord, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness of it, and the world and they who dwell in it. It says, the earth is the Lord's. The earth is whose? The earth is whose? Who does the earth belong to? Again, who does the earth belong to? The earth is whose? Watch this, and it says, and the fullness of it, that's everything in it. So the earth is the Lord's and everything in it belongs to who? The Lord. And then it says, the world and they who dwell in it. So everything you see, taste, touch, feel belongs to the Lord. And then it says, and you belong to the Lord. Everybody here belongs to the Lord. Everything that makes this world full belongs to who? The Lord. He said, you got to get this at the top of this year. God owns everything. Meaning, we don't own anything. That's a hard concept to get. We don't own anything. Because who owns it? The Lord. God owns everything. Which means we don't own anything. What you thought you owned, what you thought belonged to you is not yours. I know that's tough. What you thought you owned, what you were proud over, that you thought, you know, oh, this is mine. It's not yours. Why? Because the scripture says that God owns everything and everything in it. He owns the world, everything in it, and you. Everything that you got is his. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Our time, our talent, our treasure, our relationships, our children. Man, my life changed when I realized my kids weren't mine. When I realized he allowed me to, to birth into this world his own, It changed my whole paradigm. The kids ain't yours. They're God's. Talent ain't yours. It's God's. Your gifts, they're not yours. It's God's. Your money. Well, they ain't going to like a lot of this talk. Your money, it's not yours. It's whose? Say it with some enthusiasm, y'all. That was look, y'all was like, kids ain't mine. Hallelujah. This house ain't mine. But the moment I said money, I mean, it's God's. Yeah, somebody had a question mark on it. It's it's God's? Yes. Money is God's. Somebody say God owns everything. Watch this. Anything that we sow. Because dominion of God, that means God's land. Anything that we sow in God's land is God's. And any harvest that comes out of God's land is God's. The seed ain't yours, and what comes from it ain't yours. Mm. The seed isn't yours, and what comes from it isn't yours. I'll repeat again. God said, you got to get this at the top of this year. you got to get this, that God owns everything. 
So when reading this scripture in Psalm about how God owns everything in the fullness thereof, you have to ask an obvious question. You got to ask this obvious question. Because if, if everything is owned by the Lord and, and I don't own anything, then why am I here? What am I supposed to do? Why am I here if God owns everything? If nothing here is mine, and I don't own anything, and I can't own anything, and it belongs to God, why am I here? Which brings me to my second point today. Your responsibility here in the earth is to manage God's stuff well. Point two, write it up there. Write it down. One, God owns everything. Two, your responsibility here in the earth is to manage God's stuff well. Very simple. Say, manage God's stuff well. What's God's stuff? Everything in the earth, the fullness of it, all the people, everything in God's land belongs to God. And your responsibility is to manage his stuff well. Some of you came in here looking for a purpose. Your purpose and destiny is to manage God's stuff well, manage his talent well, manage his giftings he's given you well, manage his money well, manage his finances well, manage his church well, manage his relationships well, manage his children well. Your responsibility here in the earth is to manage all that God owns, all of his possessions, is to manage them well. 1 Corinthians 4.2, Amplified Version. Watch what this says. The Apostle Paul tells us that, watch, ooh, I love this scripture. It says, moreover, moreover, it is essentially, it's important, it makes sense, it essentially required of stewards that a man should be found faithful, proving himself worthy of trust. A lot of us don't understand what that means. I'm going to read it again. Moreover, this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. Moreover, it is essential, required, and moreover, it is required of stewards that a man should be found faithful. What does that mean? Let me break this down. The Lord requires you to be a faithful steward over his stuff. Really simple. The Lord requires you to be a faithful steward over his stuff. I'll, I'll, let me rephrase that. The Lord requires you to prove that you're trustworthy in how you manage his stuff. That's what this says. The Lord requires you to prove that he can trust you with his stuff. That's a calling of the Lord. That's your assignment. The Lord requires you. Moreover, it says it's essential that you're faithful in being a good steward. It's important. Somebody say go deeper. Because I want to make sure you got it. So what is steward? What does that mean? What does that mean? Because a lot of us, y'all accepted it, but you didn't know what that means. I'm just going to break down this word really easy. This is Webster, Pastor Webster. And, and how he explains what steward is. Steward, watch this. A good steward is to care, to steward something, is to care, the care and the responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. Part B says, the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to you. If you're a good steward, you're careful in how you manage what somebody gave you. If you're a good student, you're careful, then the script, that, that, that uh, definition says, and you're a responsible manager of what's been entrusted to you. Now the scripture says you have to prove yourself trustworthy in being a good manager over his stuff and faithful to continue to be a good manager over and over and over again. So what is a good steward? Good steward is someone who's careful and is a good manager over what's been entrusted to them. A good steward is someone who's careful, I got to say it again because you got to get this, careful and responsible in how they manage it, how they manage God's stuff. Hmm. So back to the original question, why are you here? 
We're here to be good managers over God's dominion. We're here to be good managers over God's stuff. What is God's stuff? Everything. You're here to be a good manager. In other words, a good steward. Someone who's really careful. That means you don't just do things haphazardly with what God gives you. You're a good manager. And it says you're responsible. You could be trusted with God's stuff. Somebody yell out good manager. Somebody yell out good steward. So let's just talk about money. Can we do that? So when it comes to money, that's the hard talk conversation. You're called to be a good manager over God's finances. You're called to be a good manager over God's finances. Because whose finances is it? God's. Who did he entrust it to? You. To do what with it? To be a good steward over it. Which means what? You're responsible. You manage it well. You manage it well. You're careful in how you manage it. Because it doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you. That's the hard part. you got to get this. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the king. It belongs to the king. So all the money you got, is just, that's the king handing it to you. It don't matter if it's a check, your salary, windfall. That's the king saying, here, I'm going to let you hold this. I'm going to let you hold this, and, and I need you to manage it well. I need you to make sure that this does what I desire it to do. Wait, 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 wait. I need you to make sure this does what who desires it to do? What God desires it to do. The issue with believers is we like to make sure it does what we desire it to do. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. But it's not yours. I know some of y'all. Some of y'all, some of us are like really close friends. When you let, lend somebody some money and you see them on Facebook with new J's and they ain't paid you back. Think about that feeling. You're like, hold, hold on. Some of us know tax season coming up, so you start itching like, all right, I'm going to start texting this person that owe me money. Hey, 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 don't forget about me. <laughs> yeah, I lent it to you. I need you to manage it well, though. It ain't yours. Because it's mine. If it's not your money, your responsibility is to manage it well. Mm. Somebody say good steward. God is saying, I trust you with my money. He says, I'm not going to force you how to spend it. And do what I'm not going to force you. He says, I'm not gonna, he says, I'm not going to micromanage you either. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trust you. Like that scripture said in Corinthians, I'm going to trust you. Why would he trust you? Because you're an heir. You're an heir to the king. You're an heir. Scripture says you're an heir to God and a joint heir with Christ. So he's like, you're my child. I don't mind lending my child money. He says, but I trust you. I'm going to trust you to do well with it. Don't go out. Don't go out and just do what you want to do with it. Don't go out and do what you want to do with it because it's not yours. Somebody say, it's not yours. I'll say why. I'll say why. I heard the Lord say that when you gave your life to me, it wasn't just your physical body, but it was your whole life and everything connected to it, meaning your money too. And God says, I'm trusting you with it. I'm trusting you to manage your inheritance well because you're an heir. This brings me to my third point. God says, I'm trusting you to put my will and my desires first. Good stewards put God first. One, everything belongs to God. God owns everything. Two, he's calling you to manage his stuff well. Three, good stewards put God first. Good managers put God first. Good stewards say, since everything belongs to God and is owned by God, like Psalm 24, 1 says, 
then a good steward needs to know the king's heart. If you desire to manage God's money well, you need to know the king's heart. Imagine you manage a company. You're a manager. If you're to manage the company well, you got to know the CEO's heart and his desire. Look at Chick-fil-A. Every Chick-fil-A runs like a machine. Every manager, store manager has that thing tight. Tight. Where you can go to any Chick-fil-A and have the same experience. Hopefully. But they're believers, so you know, it's okay. We mess up sometimes. We do. Oh, but they clean it up. They'll fix it. Yeah, that's the part that matters. Now, but they have a store manager who manages that store very well. And how do they, how do all these managers know, how, how do they get in, in line, in, in alignment, and they're in sync with each other? Because they know the owner's heart. They know the owner wants you to feel blessed when you leave. They know the owner wants your food on time. They know the owner wants you to feel like uh, I'm around believers. That this is a safe place for you. This is a safe place for your family and your kids. Because the manager knows the CEO's heart. Same thing with God. God says, I want you to know the king's heart. For you to be a good manager, you got to know my heart. You got to know what I desire. Good stewards put me first. How do, so what do, how, what's, what's God's heart? What's God's heart? God's heart is... Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. So good managers put God's heart first. Seek first before you do anything else with that money. Ooh, we'll do that. Seek first before you do anything else with that money. As soon as you get the check, what do we do? Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, pay my time. Seek first what God wants you to do first. God, what is your heart? What is your, seek you first the kingdom of God. What is your will for this kingdom here? What's your will for this money here in this kingdom? You got to ask. Good stewards, they ask. Mama Gwen says, they check in. God, what do you want to do with this money? Oftentimes we say, oh, I got new money. I can go buy more stuff. That's why some of us, let's be honest, that's why some of us, we get, we get raises and upgrades and new jobs, but we feel like we still go and check the check. Because God blesses you, and then you just start getting more stuff, which is not the desire of the Lord. But if you checked in with God, then you would know what he wants you to do with it. God, I got, a, I got this windfall, or I got extra money this week. I was blessed financially. The first thing you need to do is say, God, what do you want to do with it in your kingdom? A lot of us spend God's money before we even talk to him. Oh, I got a windfall coming. I'm, I'm going to Jamaica. I had a windfall coming. I'm going to buy a new gun. There are gun people here, guys. <laughs> I'm one of them. You spend God's money before you even talk to him. Then we wonder why the money ain't money in it. Does that make sense? Why the money ain't money in it. You ever look at your bank account and realize, like, man, like, I make a lot of money. Well, why don't I have it? Why don't I have it? Just got paid and I ain't got nothing. But what we do, let's be honest, practical, what we do is we spend God's money and then we start to bring things into our life that we can't afford. The 
that we can't afford. So now you need more money. So now when God asks you to do something, when you actually hear God to do something with the money, you don't do it. That's when you, oh, mm, God, I, I got this rent. I got this mortgage. God's like, I didn't tell you to live there. I didn't tell you to buy that. I didn't tell you to buy all the multiple cars you got. We, we, we gonna get there, we gonna get there, we gonna get there. Proverbs 3, because I don't wanna go too far from my notes. Proverbs 3. 3, 6 says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. You have to apply that to your money. In all of my ways, I'll acknowledge him this is a trusting statement, and I trust him to do what he's going to do with it. I trust him to direct my path, meaning as soon as I get some money, I have to acknowledge him. God, what do you want to do? Too often we say, God, what do I want to do? I'm, I'm trying to, and then we pray about it. We pray about it like, God, can you give me, a, 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 you bless me with this, but if I can get about 200 more, I, I, I can do this. I can get about two or more, I can do this. God, you got to give me a new job because I, I don't have what I want. You see how we talk? Our prayers are just misconstrued. Our prayer, our prayer uh, they're perverted. God, can you give me more money to do what I want to do? Then we, then we misconstrue scripture and say, well, well, he gives me the desires of my heart. One, where's that? Two, is that the right context to even say that? He'll give you the, he'll give you the what's it say? When I delight in him, then he'll give me the desires of my heart. I want y'all to hear that one more time. When I delight in him, then he'll give me the desires of my heart. Wait a minute. When I delight in him, what, is, what does delight mean? When I put his will and his desires into my heart and I find joy in following the Lord, then he'll give me those desires because they're his. But too often we're we praying for our desires. God, I need a new job so I can buy a new house. I need a new job so I can get this Tesla. I need a new... Can you bless me with this so I can do this? It's all carnal. We need to shift our prayer life. God, I want to do your will. What do you want me to do with this money? Why does this make sense? Because that's, that's acknowledging him in all your ways. This brings us to my fourth point. The issue, why we don't do that, a lot of us, aren't okay with putting God first with our money? Very simple, because we're greedy. Because we're greedy. So my fourth point today, be content and avoid being greedy. Avoid being greedy. Be content. A lot of us won't pray... A lot of us, thank you, Holy Spirit, a lot of us won't pray, God, what do you want me to do with this? This is how I know everybody in the room can hear God, because we refuse to pray certain things. That's how I know you can hear them. A lot of us say, well, I can never hear God. No, you hear God, and you know you hear God. That's why you don't pray certain things, because you don't, you don't want to know what God's going to say. <laughs> Who, if so happened, he say something back to me. So it's like, I ain't going to ask. I'm not going to ask what he want because I really, I really already planned what I was going to do with this money. So you won't even go with the formalities of prayer. You won't even go with it because it's like, ah, he, I know I can hear him. He might just say, don't spend it. He might just say, sow it to somebody in need. He might just say, give it all over to that person you drive past on the corner every week. He might just say that. So because of that, you ain't going to ask. We stay in the Lord, we thank you. You stay there. You stay in the Lord, we thank you area. Lord, I thank you. But you never, you never cross over to, so what do you want me to do? Remember the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> Remember the Lord's Prayer? You honor God 
God, we thank you, uh, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Then it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. All it was saying was, God, do whatever you want to do with me. A lot of us stay in the, God, I glorify you. God, I thank you. Woo, you blessed me this week. Amen. That's how we do. And we never shift. We never shift to the next point. He gave us instruction on how to pray. He, all, he said, always pray. Thy will be done in me. God, what do you want to do with this money? What do you want to do with this blessing? What do you want to do with this resource? We don't, we don't ask that. Mm. Why? Because we're greedy. That's just plain and simple. We, we, I am. We're greedy sometimes. Four, be content and avoid being greedy. Greedy people just want more stuff. That's greedy person just wants more stuff. They're never content with what they got. They can have a great house, transportation, nice clothes, and then they'd be like, man, but this ain't enough. If only I could have more. Listen, I, I, I can talk about, I can only talk about me in my household. You know, there are times where we get caught up. We're sitting at home while we're watching a 70 inch TV. Like, man, man, we need a new house that's bigger to fit. You slip, you, you, you slip in there real quick, real quick. Like, man, man, we should. I don't like these carpets. God, you got to bless me with more so I can, you know, I don't want people walking in here seeing this stain. Mm. God, you got to bless me. But at the same time, at the same time, God's like, I did bless you. I got you a house. You got four kids. The reason you got the stain is because you got four kids. So the stain is the blessing. The stain is the blessing. Yeah, it's not as clean as you want it to be, but it's a blessing because you're taking care of what of God's possession. You sitting there fussing uh, as a babysitter of God's God's children, but you forgot that they're the blessing. I remember one conversation me and Charmaine had. We were sitting at home, and we were we were both just fussing and complaining, like, oh, man, we got the man, we got the boo because this ain't. It. We got a four bedroom, three and a half, three full bath, half bath, full basement. It, it's just the things that God blessed me with, blessed me with while I was making thirty five thousand dollars a year, and she was making thirty six. But God just made a way. He made a way. There was no way we should have got what we had. Some of you know our testimony. I'm not going to share it today. But there, there was no way. Just God stepped in and just blessed us. And we had the audacity to be sitting on our fluffy little couch watching a 70-inch TV, feet kicked up, eating grapes, talking about, mm, man, this ain't enough. This ain't enough. While we're warming our cars up outside, on a, talking about talking about this ain't. I can only talk about me. Talking about we ain't got enough. God bless me, and God check. She, she remembers. God checked me so hard at that moment. The audacity. Did you forget how you got here? Did you forget all the shouting and crying you did when you said, I bless you? Now my blessing ain't enough. I, I, I told her, I said, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It was one of those moments like, cut the TV off. Hey, we can't do this. We, we have to repent. I just said, I said, when we come home, we just need to speak life over what, the, what we got. I'm so thankful for this. I'm so thankful for this apartment. I'm so thankful that it, it, it could it could it be could it be more? Could I have a three bedroom apartment? And the one, but, but I got it. But I'm, I have somewhere to live. I got I got food on my table. Listen, we were fussing. We were fussing about. Oh, man, we can't just keep giving the kids uh, 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 chicken nuggets and uh, no, they love it. They love it, and we fuss it. No, no, but you got it. They're still eating. 
They're still fed. They're still well nourished. They're still healthy. They have somewhere to sleep. They got heat. They got, they got AC. And you fussing. So I told her, I said, listen, we can't do that no more. We ain't fussing over what we got. No, God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. God, if it be your will for us to have more, I'll receive it. If it be your will for us to stay right here, I'll stay. <laughs> some, of the, some of the older saints used to say, if he doesn't do another thing, God, I bless you. If he doesn't do another thing, he's done enough. That phrase, that phrase was birthed out of even Job. Job lost everything. And he said, God, you give and, and you take away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Be content and avoid being greedy. Realize, brother, oh, Brother Orlando preached such an amazing message a few weeks ago about being content. Realizing that you're blessed right where you are. You are blessed right where you are. You are blessed right where you are. Sometimes you just got to start counting up your blessings. Count it all joy. Okay, I got, I got clothes. I got, you know, I can have more, but I got it. I got food. I got this. I got transportation. Some of us got an extra car in our driveway we don't even need, but we still fuss it. All you have is all you need, and all you need is all you have. But that's, that's a paradigm shift. God says you got to get this at the top of this year. That's a paradigm shift. You got to get it. You got to get that God owns everything, that you're called to be a good manager over what, he, what he's given you. What was the third one? Put it up there. You, you're called to be a good steward and put God first. And four, be content. And avoid being greedy. And avoid being greedy. Brings me to my last little point. Last point. Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. When the Lord gives us something, he has an expectation for us to give it away. It, when you seek ye first, you start reading this word, then you start seeing the same thing being said over and over again. One of those things is to be generous. Be generous. He even says he likes it when we give it away with joy. Wait a minute. So if, you, if you're seeking, God, what, 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 what do I need to do with this money? Your question should be, how should I be generous with this money? Watch this. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 7. English Standard Version says... The point is, <laughs> whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Verse 7, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, in his heart not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. God loves it when you check in with him and you, are, you cheerfully give it away. To give cheerfully, that means you trust God because you believe scripture. Well, if I give it, he's going to give it back. Kingdom concept. If I give it, he'll give it back to me so I can give it with joy because I ain't going to miss it that long. I, ain't, I shouldn't even have to miss it because the way our king works is the more you give it, the more he gives back to you. Ah, so just keep on giving. That's why I love some of the older saints because they knew, they knew this concept. I can't beat God giving. 2 Corinthians 9 11 says, You will be enriched in every way. Watch this. You will be enriched in every way. Who will be enriched? You, you will be enriched in every way so that you can be what? I love when the Bible puts so in there. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. 
So it's a why question. Why would God enrich you? So you can be generous. He, didn't, he doesn't enrich you just so you can buy stuff for you. He enriches you so you can be generous on every occasion. Every occasion. Watch what it says. On every occasion and through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. So when you are generous, it's a sign of thanksgiving to the Lord. Because the deeper side of that is when I'm generous, I'm trusting God. And God says, oh my goodness, I love that. It's a sign of thanksgiving. So when you give, you're saying, God, I thank you. When you sow into somebody else's life, you're saying, God, I thank you. When you sow a seed in the ground, you're saying, God, I thank you. God, I thank you because I wouldn't have it if you didn't give it. God, I'm thankful that you let me hold it for this long. And God, I'm sowing it. And the way God works is like, thank you. I'm going to give it back to you. Luke 6, 38, I love this. It says, give, and it will be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. <laughs> Watch this. I was, I was, I was, God brought this alive to me. Um, I was raking the leaves. One, it snowed, and then I was like, oh, my God, I forgot to rake the leaves. So I was raking the leaves at the house I was complaining about. With my blessed kids out there, I rake the leaves up and I'm putting them in the bag. You ever rake leaves and start putting them in the bag? So somebody said, no, dope. But when you do that, you put them in a the bag and, you know, leaves, you can actually push them down. So I opened a bag and I was putting leaves in and then I pressed it down. And when I let go, it started overflowing again. But I'm like, there's still room. So I pressed it down. And I, then, then what you do is you grab the bag and you shake it to create more room, to put more in. And it gets to the point where that bag starts overflowing. And what the scripture was saying, God was like, listen, see, that's what I do with you. The way I give to you, one, I fill up your whole cup. And then when you felt like there is no room, I can see more room, so I press it down. And I put more in it. And then when you, when, I, when you feel like you had enough, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, there's more in there. And then I put more in. And then the scripture lets us know that he doesn't stop giving until it's overflowing. Mm. So why not? Then it says, for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Again, it says the same thing, same word, same thing. Over and over. You give, I give it back to you. And this one says, I'll give you more than that. I'll give you more than what you gave out. <sighs> Set to your feet. Be generous. First Timothy 6, 18 says, Paul wrote to Timothy saying, tell him to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. <sighs> Y'all write these five points down. Can you put them up there, Sister Gail? One, understand that God owns everything. God owns everything. Two, he's called you to manage his stuff well. Three, he desires you to put him first in everything that you manage. Four, don't be greedy. Know that you're blessed exactly with what you got. Because the king's always looking out for you. He'll never forsake you. He's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. He's all these things, and he'll never stop. So you good where you are. Five, be generous. Somebody say thank the Lord for the word. Thank you so much for joining us here at The Well. We pray that you were really able to encounter love, experience freedom, and were inspired to truly, truly live on purpose as God has designed a destiny for each of us. God bless you. Thank you so much. And remember, here at The Well, we love you. We love you. Transformation is real. And there's plenty of room just for you. Have a blessed day.